We are going to have some fun in Barcelona, walking around in the old town, the Gothic Quarter. It's one of the largest pedestrian zones in Europe, with various little plazas connected by walking lanes lined with shops, and plenty of bars and restaurants and sidewalk cafes. While Barcelona has many famous sites and museums, one of the great pleasures is just hanging out, just taking a stroll, sitting down, relaxing, watching the people go by. It can get pretty crowded because this is a real popular city and there's a busy nightlife with some activities that draw even more people. For example, Barcelonans love to get together at festivals and dance the Sardana at the outdoor plazas. We'll show you some of that coming right up. And we'll take you inside perhaps the greatest monument of the old town, the cathedral. Then we'll point out some ways that you can go and get lost. Visiting neighborhoods around the cathedral, the Church of P, the Plaza San Jaime, the Royal Square, and all of those marvelous little pedestrian lanes ideal for walking. It would be smart to spend most of your time in and around the old section of town called the Bari Gothic or Gothic Quarter, a giant pedestrian zone surviving from the ancient days. It's perhaps the most extensive automobile-free district in all of Europe, except for Venice. And its tapa bars are one of the biggest attractions. Tapas. Tapas. Oh, can yes. I see? Yes, sir. It's tapas. Look. Thank you. These small, delicious snacks are quite inexpensive, maybe three euro per plate, and you can grab three or four of them and you've got quite a meal. What is this place? This place is Plaza San Josep Oriol. This name in the plate. Uh -huh. Here, Plaza, Plaza San Josep Oriol. Oh, and that's the church of? Uh... No, the place is uh, the church Santa Maria del Pi. Del Pi. A quiet scene with a pleasant church backdrop, but look at the gymnasts doing cartwheels in the background. People sitting at their cafe tables are sometimes irritated by these gymnasts who are blasting their music and looking for tips. Not only are these street performers sometimes an annoying distraction, they're breaking the law. Just watch what happens as the police arrive. The music stops and the cops move in. In a very calm and professional way, they round up these lawbreakers and they are going to escort them off the premises somewhere and no doubt give them a citation. These guys are going to have to show up in court and pay a fine. While peace and quiet has returned to the plaza. Around the corner in the plaza that extends in front of the Church of Santa Maria del Pi, there's some kind of a food market going on with a nice variety of local jams and condiments on offer, specializing in a variety of local marmalades, olive oils, balsamics, and various food snacks. We're right in front of the church and the door's open, so let's step inside, have a quick look. The impressive church interior features a high ceiling with gothic vaulting and many stained glass windows all around, but otherwise the interior is rather plain because it was burned out during the Spanish Civil War. Gothic style overall with some Baroque side chapels around the central nave, and it's believed this church was first built from about the year 1000 as a much smaller Romanesque church that later was rebuilt into the church we see today around the 15th century. Most famous for what is reputedly the world's largest round stained glass Gothic window. The lovely pedestrian lanes around the church are ideal for wandering and shopping and people watching, and they soon lead you over to a main pedestrian lane, Carrera de Ferran, a straight road that connects the Rambla with the Plaza San Jaume. Around the corner, there's an unusual bridge up above in what seems to be the Gothic style, although it was built in the early 20th century. It connects the government headquarters of Catalonia with the residence of the president of Catalonia. Turn by the bridge to find the small plaza of St. Philip Neri, which is closed off for part of the day as a playground for the nearby school, but otherwise you can walk through and have a look at the old Baroque church. 
and the stone walls with the pocketed scars that have been preserved from the Spanish Civil War when bombs went off here, with fascists blowing up some Republican opponents. And then you'll arrive quickly at the Grand Plaza of the Plaza Royale, that's the Royal Square. And this was built in the 19th century. It's surrounded by magnificent arcades on all sides and anchored by a grand fountain in the center. While this is a very popular touristic destination, it's also a public space that's utilized by the locals, especially when they're putting on an outdoor concert at one of their various festivals. We dropped in on a live performance that was part of the Marseille Festival, mostly locals out in the audience. The Marseille Festival is Barcelona's biggest weekend of the year. And we do have other movies about the Marseille in our collection. So for now, we're just having a quick look and then enjoying this royal plaza during its normal activities, such as a coin collector's gathering. On Sundays, they have a flea market with antiques and collectibles. The street market could be a good place to pick up an authentic souvenir. Better than a tourist shop, but perhaps the main attraction of the Royal Square are the many restaurants lining it all the way around. We'll come back in a minute to show you the square at night in restaurant heaven. But first, a quick look at the most famous street in town, the Rambla. It runs right next to the Royal Square. And this place is always lively day and night. There are outdoor restaurants from one end to the other. so. Hey, if you want to sit down and do some people watching, this would be a great place to have a drink. Maybe even a meal. It's not going to be the greatest food in town, but it does have some of the best scenery for those who are into people watching. Back into the Royal Square in the evening, you can see it's even more lively at night than during the day, primarily because of all the busy restaurants, and it's like an outdoor living room for the people who live here. Even if you're not hungry, this is certainly an interesting spot to pass through in the evening. There's even a couple of small deluxe hotels on the square. And just looking around at all the food, you'll quickly work up an appetite. While you have many restaurants to pick from on the square, the most famous one is a phenomenon called Les Quincenits, where people sometimes line up for over an hour to get in for dinner, attracted by the low prices, the high quality, and the big fame. One way to beat the line is to come in for a late lunch, say about 2 or 3 p.m., or you can reserve online. Open from 9 a.m. till midnight. And don't hesitate to take a walk at night in the heart of Barcelona. For example, once again, back out here on the Rambla. It really is quite safe because there are so many people around. The streets are pretty well lit. Now, Barcelona, frankly, does have a reputation as somewhat of a pickpocket haven, so you want to be careful. But you can see how charming these little squares and lanes can be at night. You don't want to miss out on that. And the Spaniards, as you know, stay up late, so the restaurants are open. One of the busiest pedestrian streets is Carrer de Jaume, which is actually part of a much longer street that goes from one end of downtown to the other, changing names to Carrer de la Princesa, and as we saw earlier, Carrer de Ferran. That culinary favorite of pizza is always available. And gelato, that could be your staple dishes in town, along with the tapas and the vino. This lively street inevitably leads into its namesake, the Plaza San Jaume, where City Hall is located, the other government buildings, and lots of people. Tonight there was a special event, part of the Marseille Festival, lighting up the buildings with moving illuminations and music. Over a hundred events with music and dance performances take place on that Marseille Festival weekend. We'll show you a little bit more of this and the Sardana dance at the end of the show. Events also happen in front of the cathedral on the big square in the heart of town. We're going inside in just a moment, but first have a look at this grand view. It's from the rooftop bar of the Hotel Cologne which is open to the public. Just go on into the hotel lobby, use the elevator, go on up top and have a drink and enjoy the view. 
The cathedral is Gothic, built between the 13th and 15th centuries, although the facade was built later in the late 19th and early 20th century in the Gothic style. They've done a wonderful job with the pointed arches and the statues and the angels leading up to heaven. The cathedral is distinguished by the great size of its nave, 275 feet long by 122 feet wide, reaching a height of 174 feet. There are a series of chapels around the perimeter of the church and a large cloister adjacent, a Latin cross but with a shallow transept. Pagan, Moor, and Christian have worshiped in succession on this site. The first church was consecrated about the year 1058 built on the site of a pagan temple, and that church was converted by Muslims into a mosque. But the Moors only remained in Barcelona for less than a century. The cathedral we see now was commenced in 1298, finished in 1448. By all means, go through the connecting door on the right side into the elegant Gothic cloister with its pleasant court of palm trees and sparkling waters. It's pointed arcades wrapping around a central courtyard where you'll find a noisy surprise. <laughs> These cackling geese are the extension of a long tradition here where in the past they warned against intruders and thieves. There is an admission charge, but if you come in the morning between 8 a.m. and 12.45, the entrance is free with access to the full interior and the cloister. Also free entrance in the evening from 5.45 till 7.30 p.m. There is another cloister just in front of the cathedral in a Gothic palace from the 15th century. This was the former home of the archdeacon with a beautiful Gothic fountain in the center of the courtyard. This is free and open to the public, and you can also go inside the building, and there you can have a glimpse at the original Roman wall that once encircled the ancient town. For the next two minutes through the end of the show, I'm going to bring you back out into the plaza in front of the cathedral for some of the entertainment of the Mersey Festival. Many more movies about Barcelona in our collection. Be sure to look for them.
And if you enjoyed the movie, how about a thumbs up? And we always welcome comments down below. It really helps us spread the word. We upload a new movie every week, so please subscribe to our channel. And be sure to click that little alarm bell. Then you'll be notified. Thank you.